Welcome to Canadian Justice. I'm Christine Van Gyne, and today I want to talk about Constitutional Law 101, the basics of our Constitution, and what Canadians need to know about how our Constitution works. I'm the litigation director for a Canadian legal charity called the Canadian Constitution Foundation that fights for fundamental freedoms in the courts of law and public opinion. And one of the things that I've noticed over the last two years is not just some erosion of our basic civil liberties, but a shift in culture that's shown a devaluation of civil liberties and fundamental freedoms, and a core lack of understanding of these values. In order to protect our freedoms, we must truly understand them, and public education is a core part of our mandate at the Canadian Constitution Foundation. That's why I'm so thrilled to do this episode today to discuss a new project we have at the CCF. We're going to be joined by three of the leaders of this project now, Joanna Barron, Russell Phillips, and Chantal Valavance. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Joanna, I want to start with you. What can you tell us about this new project? What exactly is it? So it is a course that we recorded with top lawyers, law professors from across the country last summer, and it touches through all of the fundamental freedoms of the Constitution. So there are about 12 videos that are between uh, 25 and 35 minutes in length. There are quizzes, um, and they're really accessible, but they're in no way dumbed down. So they really give a really amazing, as you say, constitutional law 101 overview. You will be become so much more conversant in our legal culture once you take the course, which is free. Just so, so important and incredible that it's, it's available for free. Um, now, Chantal, you worked on developing the architecture of the course. What are some of the topics that the course covers? Well, um, it covers most of the charter rights. Um, so the right to liberty, freedom of religion, um, and uh, well, uh, all of the freedoms that are encompassed in the in the charter, uh, equality as well. Uh, it also covers like the separation of powers and how federalism works. And um, so it really gives like a big, uh, a really nice overview of how the constitution works and uh, what the texts are. And I think it's a very good introduction for someone who hears about it, but hasn't really studied it in school, let's say. Now, Russ, you and Chantal worked on this course together. You put the whole thing together as an online learning platform. What can you tell us about how the platform works? How do people sign up for it? All of that, those kind of details. Well, we made it uh, really simple. It's just a matter of going to the ccf.ca uh, slash learn, or you can just go to the ccf.ca's main homepage and there's a link that takes you to it. Uh, from there, you make a quick account just with a, a email and a password. And after that, you can enroll in the course and it's totally free. That's incredible. Uh, now, Chantal, how long would you say it takes to complete the course? And, and what do you get at the end of it all? Well, uh, how long? It's a very good question because it depends, um, I would guess, on, on how you want to take it because you can you can do it in little parts. You can do it once and do all of the videos like back to back. Um, so as, as uh, Joanna has said, uh, all of the all of the little uh, sections of the course uh, last between 20 to 35 minutes and there are 12. And uh, so in the end, after all the quizzes, you get a little certificate, uh, which, which is quite something because I mean, it's a real course that is uh, taught by the by leading experts in the field. So uh, I mean, it's not just like um, a, a gift. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very real uh, certificate that gives you like credit and that shows that you're now more knowledgeable than you were before taking the course. Yeah, and it's something that you can share on your own social media. You can print yes. it if you if you want to do that. And and some of the people who are teaching this course are, you know, scholars who are are professors at leading Canadian law schools. And and we're going to talk about the background of of some of some of these people who are are leading this course. It's all by video lecture. So, as you said Chantal, you kind of take it at your own pace. We've got to go to commercial break, but when we come back, I want to talk to, to you, Joanna, about 
why the CCF decided to make this course, what prompted it, and if it's kind of driven by anything that's been happening in our country with respect to civil liberties and people's general understanding. I think it's constitutional rights are really at top of mind for so many people. Uh, we've got to go to commercial break, but we will continue this when we come back. Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing a new free online course that's being offered by the Canadian Constitution Foundation about fundamental freedoms. Uh, now, Joanna, I want to know why the CCF decided to make this, th this project. What prompted this? You know, I would say, obviously, since the pandemic started, there's been a huge emphasis on rights, but I would say by about spring 2021, we started to notice that a lot of people kind of thought the default was that the government could just kind of impose restrictions indefinitely, take, you know, whatever, uh, you know, draconian lockdown restrictions, whether or not they were justified. And we just wanted to come in and say, okay, we're not the United States where rights are, are absolute. We do have limitations on rights, which perhaps we'll talk about later in the show, but we also do have a constitution and we do have a framework of liberties. And we wanted to sort of get that out into the culture because if citizens aren't aware, they can't exercise their rights. Such an important point, and I think that there's there's so much misinformation and, and misunderstanding about how our rights work and, and how our constitution works. So this is a really such an important education project. Now, Chantel, the, the people, as I mentioned in the last segment, who are giving these lectures are some, some of the leading practitioners and scholars about Canada's constitution. Can you give, tell us a little bit more about who some of these lectures are given by? Because you were the one who went out and recruited these people to give these lectures. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, it was quite the honor to get to uh, meet all of these people, uh, some, uh, some of whom I had never spoken to before, but they were all very enthusiastic about the idea of participating, um, which was amazing. And so uh, we have some leading um, pra practicing lawyers, uh, such as uh, Asher Honigman, for example, uh, Kelsey Fanagan, uh, who's doing a, sec a section on... Um, on sections eight to 10 of the charter. And Just for our viewers, at, what, what are sections eight to 10? Those are, can you explain what that, those are? Yes, of course. So they're in the section of the charter that deals with the rights of a criminally, of someone who's accused in the criminal justice system. So uh, it deals with detention and arrest and uh, the rights that you have uh, with a search and seizure. Um, so these these rights deal with this portion. And um, so we had Kelsey Fanagan from Hanine Hutchison who uh, did this section with us. Uh, there are also some pro law professors from various universities. So like Jennifer Quaid from the University of Ottawa and um, it's it's very I think I think it's it's a very a beautiful uh, array of different people. Uh, who all put in their unique flavor <laughs> to the mix. Yeah, I, I, I've obviously done all of the, the whole course and I loved just getting this, this groundwork laid again. Obviously, I'm a, a lawyer already, but I, I think that this is a course that's not just for lawyers. Russ, no. can you talk about that a little bit? What's the level of difficulty of the course? I mean, it's not, it's not for, for lawyers, but, but is it like a high school level, university level? Is it for, for people who already have a basic understanding of legal jargon, or could this be for anybody? I would say it's for anybody. I mean, that's not to undercut the quality of information you're, you're getting, because as, as Chantal said, uh, um, the, the people that are presenting the different topics are, you know, they're, they're accomplished legal practitioners and academics. So you're getting the best quality stuff, but it's, it's explained in a way that I think anybody could, can log in and uh, understand. Um, so even if you had a little bit of understanding, you probably would gain a lot more because it goes over even things like, uh, like cases that have specific uh, uh, importance for certain sections, which is always good to know, uh, or you know just the, the basic understanding of when it was drafted and what the intention behind that, that part of the charter was, was for, so yeah. 
such an important perspective. Now, this isn't a passive course. You don't just sit back and watch the videos and get your certificate. You actually have to pass some quizzes uh, to test your knowledge about the course and the material you've learned. Joanna, what, how challenging would you say these, these quizzes are? Should people be intimidated? Should people take notes as they're doing it? What can you say about that? I would say you absolutely shouldn't be intimidated, but you should pay attention. And if certain facts stick out to you, always great to note them down. Um, but basically, if you watch the video and you're paying attention like 80% of the time, you'll be fine. Sort of like law school, I guess, in that way, basically. right? <laughs> 100% no. <laughs> is not realistic, but 80% you'll be fine. Russ, we've got about 20 seconds. How much interest has there been so far? What's been the response? Uh, it's been huge and surprising and uh, encouraging. Uh, we've got 2,000 people already with accounts as of today. I actually checked it this morning. Wow, and it's been, um, and that, it's been only a few days. We've, we've got to go to commercial break, but we will be right back. Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing the new course being offered by the Canadian Constitution Foundation on Constitutional Law 101, which you can sign up for for free at the ccf.ca slash learn. Now, Joanna, I've noticed there has been a lot of misunderstanding about our fundamental freedoms and about our Constitution over the last two years. What are some of the common misperceptions that the public might have about our rights? So on the one side, I would say that there is, uh, and I even have had to remind, I hate to say lawyer friends of mine of this, that basically the structure of constitutional rights is they're held by individuals against the state. They don't just exist in some, you know, we don't live in a soup of constitutional law. I think probably the most common inquiry I've gotten, including from lawyer friends, is uh, about employer policies, for example, vis-a-vis -vis va vaccination. Well, employers are not the government, um, even if the employer is the government in their relation to you as, your, as their employee, it is not a relationship of state exercising absolute power against an individual. So that's just basic misconception that I see all the time. On the other side, I would say that there has been a big misconception that in cases, in, in instances of emergency or crisis, rights can just be cast to the sidelines. Well, no, the fathers of Confederation and the framers of the charter very clearly anticipated that crises, pandemics, wars, conflicts were going to come up. And these were things that they wanted guaranteed in our constitutional architecture, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should have sign up some of our political leaders for the course as well, because they certainly seem to have forgotten this. Uh, now, now, Chantel, I want to ask you a similar question. You work as a criminal defense lawyer or as an articling student in criminal defense law. What are some common misperce misperceptions about Canada's constitution and criminal law in particular that you think education like this course could help clear up? Well, um, one one that really is matters to me a lot is that a lot of it seems to me that most people will think that um, accused persons have all of these rights, um, which is true. But at the same time, um, while the rights that protect the accused persons in the charter come into play once they're accused, that anybody can 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 have them in in life because um, if 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 you get asked a question by a police officer or if you get detained um, per uh, COVID restrictions or like for in any type of uh, your your car gets uh, stopped uh, at, on the side of the road and you get asked questions and um, all of these things that can pretty much happen to any citizen uh, who's just living their lives. Um, you have all of these rights not to be detained, unduly detained, not to be arrested uh, without being um, there having reasons for the police officer to do so because of the fact that these rights do profit to people who are accused of a criminal charge. So even though you aren't gonna be accused of anything eventually, or well, 
who knows? Uh, the fact is that it's because of those rights that we live in a free and democratic society that you can walk around not in fear of being intercepted by the police for no reason. And that you know that these protections exist and that if you do uh, get intercepted then you have the right to call a lawyer and to know what the charge is against you and all of these things. It's so, so important that people have an understanding of, of the rights that they have vis-a-vis -vis the state, especially in the context of, of being a criminally accused. It's not the accused that have all these rights. We all have these rights at all times. It's just that they're in play when you're an accused person. Now, Russ, okay. you, in, in your role as a communications director for the CCF, you receive a lot of feedback from the public. What are some common misunderstandings about our rights that you see? And how can this help course help people better understand their rights? Yeah, I mean, most of the feedback I've been getting for this uh, this course has been extremely positive. Uh, but um, outside of that, sometimes you get uh, it, it's funny you get messages from people who think uh, uh, some of our claims are in in favor of rights go too far, or other people who say that we're not doing enough. And there's always uh, there's always trouble with that trying to, to explain to people and and probably first and foremost the, the biggest thing is some people don't exactly know how the charter works and that it applies to state state actors specifically and they they see their rights as being violated by uh, other private citizens and that's not exactly how it works of course yeah such a such an important point and such a common misperception that we see all the time we've got to go to commercial break but we're going to continue this discussion when we get back Welcome back to Canadian Justice, where we're discussing the Canadian Constitution Foundation's new online learning course at the CCF.ca, where you can learn the basics of constitutional law. Now, Joanna, this is the first of the CCF's learning courses and projects online. Do you see more of this in the future? And what might some of the other topics uh, for an online course be? I think absolutely. I think that this was our sort of trial run. And so far, we've exceeded our internal goals. Um, it's been a huge hit. And so the first thing I would say is if you have requests, you can get in touch with us. But I would say off the top, the two topics that I would think about would be um, a deep dive into COVID-19 and civil liberties, which we might have another project on the horizon, so maybe in connection with that other project, which is top secret. Um, and the second is probably free expression. There's just so much nuance and so many areas to get into around free expression and its various forms, especially with online regulation of speech. Um, it is a hot issue and very complex and multifaceted. So we could do a whole course just about that. Uh, yeah, freedom of expression is one of the my favorite topics that we get to work on with some of the most fascinating cases in Canada that we were involved in at the Canadian Constitution Foundation. Now, Chantal, you were the architect behind this course, this Con Law 101 course. What do you think would make a good idea for the next education project? Where do you see a need for improvement in public knowledge? Wow, that is such a great question. Um, I believe that there should be um i mean there there could be like further uh, involvement in um more like examples of how day-to-day -day life because like this course is really focused on uh the theory and and it's very like constitutional law 101 so it's as if you got into law school and like went to the first day and like had the first class of every topic but like in an accelerated form um but i think it could be nice for uh to have more examples of everyday life and like to provide to put some links in between the course and uh events that are happening right now and maybe like incorporate them a little bit more you know, when in the middle of COVID, when there was this temporary law that the Ontario government had imposed where police could just arbitrarily stop people on the street, one of the things we did at the CCF was we made a, a really short little brochure about know your rights if the police stop you. And that was so well received because it's really practical information for people about how to engage with police in a way that will be productive, but also not escalate things and preserve their own civil liberties. So um, I totally love your idea of giving people practical advice about how the constitution affects them on, on a day-to-day -day basis, because these rights are not theoretical. These are real rights that, that people have in Canada. Now, 
Russ, this is the first online course that the CCF has offered, but it obviously is not the first thing that we have done in public education. What have been some of the other initiatives we've had at the Canadian Constitution Foundation? Well, we've been pretty busy, uh, particularly since the era of COVID began. Um, We've done uh, different types of things on our website where we've released uh, like legal education pamphlets, such as knowing about your rights when Ontario was experiencing, I think it's first or second lockdown. Um, we had a uh, life after COVID book we did in, uh, in cooperation with a couple other organizations, which uh, talked about the uh, legal analysis of, of life after COVID and what we should be looking at in constitutional perspective, I guess. And uh, one really good one we did was uh, grading our leaders where I think it was in 2020, we had a, uh, a sheet where we, we graded the different provincial leaders as well as uh, the prime minister himself on how they uh, respected the constitution during uh, this, this pandemic. And, and we've done a number of town halls as well, which Joanna has led, sort of breaking down what's going on with COVID and our civil liberties. If Those have been recorded. So if you visit the Canadian Constitution Foundation's YouTube channel, which you can find by just entering the Canadian Constitution Foundation in the YouTube search bar, you can find a copy of those town halls. That's all the time we have for today. I want to thank all three of you for coming on and sharing your expertise. Thank you. We've heard today about what the Canadian Constitution Foundation is doing to teach the public about the fundamental freedoms that we have in our Constitution. There's never been a more important time for Canadians to understand their Constitution and our fundamental rights. We are living in unprecedented times where government is taking new powers almost every day. In order to defend our constitutional rights, it's imperative that we understand them. You can sign up for free at the ccf.ca slash learn. And if you do, tag me on Twitter at cvangine and tell me how it's going. Remember, a freer Canada starts with you.